Hello, hello. Happy Friday Eve. Thank you for joining us here on 10 TV Plus. I'm meteorologist Meredith Garfalo, joined by the one and only meteorologist <laughs> Michael Behrens. And I love this spring weather. It was so yeah. cold to start this week, and now it's finally looking and feeling more like spring. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're getting where we want to be this time of the year because, right. I mean, yesterday morning we had temperatures in the 20s out there. It was so cold out there. Do you know it was cold enough that up in Cleveland along the lakefront, they had lake effect snow yesterday yeah, morning. I saw those bands coming down. They were picking up accumulation up there. It's I saw crazy. it firsthand. It was no bueno. <laughs> <laughs> it was not fun. We are now in spring, right? Yeah, we were supposed to be. And, and Tell us we've got warmer weather coming. We do have warmer weather. That's the good news. Yeah. The bad news is when we get these really exciting pops of warm air coming in, there's a front that'll mix with it, and we could also see strong to severe storms, which is why you can see a highlight there for a weather impact alert day coming up. We'll talk about that today, but for the rest of the day, it is going to be much milder and mainly dry for us. But for Friday, get ready for a wet end to the work week. Storms are possible before we move forward and get into that threat of, again, some strong to severe storms. But you can see that temperature trend as we go throughout the rest of the day today getting up eventually into the low 60s and then tonight something actually to look forward to we're going to not be as cold overnight so you might be able to get away with a lighter jacket as we go into the forecast for your friday morning commute you'll just need an extra umbrella but you can see here just a little bit of a snapshot of the weekend forecast we are going to see temperatures getting into the 70s and that's actually where we're staying all the way through the end of the weekend. I don't know about you, I'm so excited about 75 on Saturday with a mix of sun and clouds. I mean, that is my pick of the weekend. If you're a golfer like me, I would get that tee time booked ASAP because I am sure they are already filling up. Now, Friday, Sunday, going to be a little bit of a ping pong match. And speaking of golf, of course, I wanted to have that golf forecast for you because it's nice to get some earlier season rounds in. And you can see, though, for Thursday's forecast for today, really looking at kind of good conditions, not the best of the best, but also not the worst. Now, Friday, as I'll show you, because of the chances of showers and thunderstorms in the first half of the day, could have some courses later in the day that might shift over to cart path only. So we'll be watching that could get about a half an inch of rain in some spots. And then Saturday, actually, I'm extending that into great. Might have a little bit of wind, but you know what, though? It's so nice when that's a warmer wind when you're out on the course. And let's talk about the 10 weather impact. The forecast for us on Friday, looking at now between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. to see rain and isolated storms, gusty winds. So if you have evening plans, those might actually be okay. It's the ones in the morning and early afternoon that I am concerned about as we could have some heavier downpours at times and, as I said, some isolated showers and thunderstorms. So why don't we go through the hour-by-hour -hour forecast. I'll walk you through everything so you can see what I'm talking about. Clouds increase as we go into later today, so it should be a pretty nice sunset for us, but you can start to see some green showing up on the far western part of the map. Now, as we move forward and we go overnight, there'll be lighter showers to start, but by commute Friday morning, again, here's 530. As I move the clock ahead to 7, you can start to see some of those scattered showers pushing in. And this rain is going to be pretty steady at times, especially where you can see those areas of yellow. That's some of our heavier downpours. But we also might have just enough instability to kick up some thunderstorms. Now, I'm not sensing a severe weather threat. However, I never want to say never. Sometimes you just need that one little ball of energy and you could have an isolated, stronger storm. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. We'll be tracking it all morning for you here right on 10 TV Plus. Plus. But then as we go into the later part of the morning, you can see we start to get some breaks in the rain. By the afternoon, majority of the rain starts to move out, maybe even getting some clearing by 5 o'clock in some of our southern counties. So that's why I was saying the first half of the day you'll be dealing with some showers and potentially some thunderstorms. But then the second half of the day things dry out, maybe a few isolated showers. We stay mainly dry overnight into Saturday. Here's 3 a.m. You can see those clouds spreading out across the region. And for the most part, now it is looking to be dry for us for most of Saturday. As we go into Saturday evening, I'll stop the clock here at 730. We might have some isolated showers. Again, nothing like the rain we're looking at for Friday morning. But you can see as we go into Saturday evening now, we do have some rain that's expected to move into the forecast. And that brings us up to date into Sunday. 
So what we're looking at is Sunday afternoon into early evening overnight. That is the time we might see some strong storms develop. This could mean some stronger storms that do produce damaging wind gusts. So it's something to definitely watch and keep checking back in with the weather impact team. We're going to have the latest in timing because we're still several days out. And as we know, things can significantly change with the timing, but also the intensity of these storms. And as I'll show you, it's all going to depend on what happens throughout the day on Sunday. So here's 4 a.m. You can see the rain starts to move in. Now, depending on how much rain that we get, how long it's cloudy, you really need to have that break in the clouds, that little lull where we could have the atmosphere destabilized for the main course, I guess you could say, of showers and storms moving through. But by 4 o'clock, you can see we still have some rain moving in. Now the question is going to be, does that move out before sunset? If it does, you can start to see a line developing off to the west. That's what we're going to be watching as that moves through overnight. So as we take a look at the Storm Prediction Center, our SPC, they already have an issued outlook for severe weather to be more scattered. Numerous would be a lot more likely, but that does include Columbus and the surrounding counties across central Ohio. That's why we're on alert. We'd rather provide you the alerts now to keep you safe and informed. But if you like the warmer weather, the good news is as we take a look at the outlook for the next six to 10 days. We are going to continue this warming trend above average, but we also have a threat for some above average precip. So the good thing is if the warmer temperatures are in control, that would mean more of a rain versus a snow or a wintry mix threat. We just have to watch those overnight. So for the rest of the day today, again, partly cloudy, mostly sunny, 63 for our afternoon high. Tonight, showers late developing as I showed you overnight. We're going to get down into the mid to upper 40s. It's going to feel completely different for us, a lot more milder. And then for the afternoon, again, morning to afternoon rain and storms. We should see that taper off by the second half of the afternoon. Winds will be out of the southwest a little bit on the breezier side. But for tomorrow, again, the best chances of rain going into the morning and early afternoon. But those temperatures, that warm air that's coming in behind it's actually going to really boost us up to get into the 70s. So I would say for your time to mow Thursday, today, probably one of the best days to do it because as we go into tomorrow with that morning rain, not really setting the stage for a good time by afternoon. Saturday, again, depending on how much rain you receive, I'm putting fair conditions, but then Sunday is not looking well for us either. But for the extended forecast, again, you can see once we hit the 70s, we have three days in a row that we'll be dealing with that. But we are keeping that weather impact alert day for us as we go into the second half of the day on Sunday, potentially lingering overnight into Monday. And then with the extended forecast, you'll see that we continue to see the trend of temperatures back down for Monday, but not cold, cold, I guess you could say. So there is some good news for there, Michael, that, you know, we're not going to be dealing with that snowy weather. Now, overnights <laughs> are cold, so it depends when the precip comes through, but I, I'll take afternoon highs in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, I mean, that's where we, we should be this time of year, really more in those 50s, but yeah, we get that warm air in this time of the year, and it, it comes about every time with some storms, right. it seems. So we're repeating that here again in this forecast. Oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> and. Uh, it's spring though, so it is time, and I think it's a good reminder, you know, Saturday, while we do have a nice day, make sure your tree branches mm -hmm. are trimmed, make sure your yard is ready for those gustier wind events, uh, tie down the trampoline, you don't think about it, but then we see yeah. those videos all the time. Oh, every time the wind comes through, a trampoline every goes single down time. the road. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, one more thing, speaking about spring, today, opening day, Yay. too, for baseball, which is, is great news. Um, Reds are at home, Guardians are away, both teams could see some rain out there today. I mean, those showers... They're kind of going to head towards Cincinnati about 4 o'clock, right when first pitch is going to happen. And it's only going to pick up with the chances as we go into the evening. So hopefully they can get those games in. You know, I think it's so exciting, though, at the same yeah. time. I think people are just really happy that they'll be able to be out there. And it's warm yeah. compared to what it could be for opening day. I mean, we see the opening days where it snows. Oh, yeah. I've seen some really cold opening days. I think next week for the Clippers, not going to be exactly warm weather for their opening day, but I think I think the Reds got a better chance than the Guardians. I would say because um, out in Kansas City, they actually have the risk for some severe storms today. Not seeing that here in Central Ohio. Just the uh, just the light rain this afternoon. Not yet, but as we know, what goes <laughs> from west comes east. Yeah, so that's why that's we're our keeping weekend. an eye. Exactly, <laughs> we're going to stay busy here, but keep you informed. Absolutely. 
One of the other big weather stories we've been following have been the wildfires that are devastating locations all around the U.S. this spring, but now one city is taking matters into their own hooves, so to speak. As KCAL's Rena Nakano shows us, San Clemente has launched a fire mitigation project by partnering with a private citizen who owns some goats. That's Talia right there. Mike Kay is an agricultural scientist by trade, but right now he's managing goats. It's accidentally become his passion since 2017. Like it or not, uh, I have become an expert in uh, all things California fire. Kay lost his home in Sonoma from the Tubbs fire that year. Despite his personal efforts to save his neighborhood, it was no match for the inferno. So when he moved to San Clemente a few years ago, he urged city leaders to take a citywide approach to fire prevention. His suggestion, goat grazing. It's environmentally sensitive. The cost is a fraction of what it would cost to do this with hand crews. Um, and you're not spraying the chemicals. We don't have the controlled burns. The problem was the city tried this about a decade ago, but it was met with pushback from residents who didn't want shepherds sleeping near their homes or have their dogs barking all night at the grazing goats. So the idea never came to fruition. Then they saw the recent devastation in the L.A. fires. And if this happens in San Clemente, uh, we'd have we'd have a disaster. San Clemente Mayor Steve Noblock says 80% of the city is in a high fire danger zone. Suddenly, Kay's goats sounded like a great idea. The second largest budget item in our city is fire prevention. And uh, with with the money we spend on that, this is a major component of reducing the fire risk. Last month, the city partnered with Kay to launch a pilot project where Kay would offer 20 of his goats to munch on dry bush and invasive species on 10 acres of city-owned property near Vista Hermosa Sports Park. You can see a clear difference in where the animals have been. This side of the electric fence, all the plants have been pretty much knocked down. On the other side, though, this mustard remains six feet tall. Yeah, come on. Guys. And to address on, concerns guys. of overnight come grazing, on. Kay even spent $10,000 of his own money to build a coyote-proof enclosure nearby. And instead of a shepherd, there's Steve the donkey. He's the big daddy of the herd. Steve the donkey's resume includes surviving the Tubbs fire, fighting off bobcats, and even a bear. If the coyote does attack, the donkey will stampede and will, whoosh, it will not be good for the coyote. The pilot will continue for a few months before possibly expanding across the canyon. In San Clemente, I'm Rena Nakano, KCAL News. And finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV. Speaking of fires, this is video from South Korea, South Korea's Forest Service, releasing drone video Thursday of wildfires raging through at night. That video uploaded to their YouTube page showed large swaths of forest engulfed in flames and smoke as wildfires raged across the country. Those fires doubled in size on Thursday. Authorities called the blaze of the country's worst natural fire disaster with at least 26 people killed and some historic temples incinerated. That is wild video there at night and is, is just more of what we've seen this, it seems this spring has just been really problematic for fires. I mean, you know, you just think about it, so many areas are so dry and how fast things can just spread like that. And yeah. um, sometimes you get those little whirls, those uh, fire natos they call them, which it's such a scary phenomena. Yeah. You know, it just, it adds that extra terror to what you're seeing. And in these situations, I mean, the fires can create their own weather patterns. Exactly. They'll, they'll enhance the winds, they'll spread the fires more. And a lot of times, I don't think you can get the, the scope of how big these fires are in the daytime. Right. You see these videos from the night, and you can really see how extensive, extensive they are. It's so scary, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, on the other side of things, sometimes when the sky is lit up with color, it's uh, quite nice. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of some of those nice colors out there, this is what we saw from an aurora up oh. in Finland. Uh, this was up in Lapland on Tuesday night. The aurora seen over the skies of the Arctic Circle were captured by a local photographer who said lights danced for over half an hour with sharp arcs and stunning colors. The polar regions around the equinoxes are prone to see these events, but the photographer said this display was especially vivid and intense. And no, no joke. Look at those colors. I mean, definitely, <laughs> uh, it's been so active on the sun, yeah. And so it's really enhancing these amounts of energy and what we need to come here and impact us here at Earth. And just goes to show the importance of space weather. I mean, we forecast terrestrial weather here on mm -hmm. Earth, but we have to keep an eye on what's happening in space. 
sometimes it can be bad, but sometimes it can also be good and give us yeah. these light shows. I mean, I, I've seen a couple of the auroras reach down here in Ohio over the past year, oh. and you can get some good photos of them, but I would love to see one so bright that it lights up the Where ground. you can just put your <laughs> phone down, because you had to use your phone to yeah. get a photo like this. I mean, It'd be so nice to put it down, just look up and be like, wow. Absolutely, I mean, if I videoed the sky in, here in Ohio with this, wouldn't have seen nothing close to that, but got to put that on my bucket list. It's so amazing. Mine too. <laughs> well, thanks, Michael. And thank you. This is time for your weather update to end here on 10 TV Plus. Coming up later tonight at 6, Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz will have the latest on our threat for showers and thunderstorms into the weekend. But until then, you can catch more news and weather online at 10TV.com. Have a great afternoon, everybody.